Good morning everyone. It is Friday the 22nd of January. Um, another week has flown by. Uh, but we're going to pause this morning, uh, just at the start of this day, to read God's Word together. Um, this morning we are going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 17. So let's read it together. Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with conflict and feasting. A wise servant will rule over the master's disgraceful son and will share the inheritance of the master's child. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. Those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at misfortune of others will be punished. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool. Even less are lies fitting for a ruler. A bride is luck is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. Evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in foolishness. If you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. Starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate, so stop before a dispute breaks out. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent both are detestable to the Lord. It is sensible to pay tuition to educate a fool. It is senseless to pay tuition to educate a fool since he has no heart for learning. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or to put up security for a friend. Anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Anyone who trusts in a high wall invites disaster. The crooked heart will not prosper the lying tongues tumble into trouble. It is painful to be a parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of the rebel. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. The wicked take secret bribes to prevent the course of justice. Sensible people, people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. Foolish children bring grief to their father and bitterness to the one who gave them birth. It is wrong to punish the godly for being good or to flog leaders for being honest. A true, wise, truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. Amen. And that is the end of Proverbs chapter 17. It's interesting just as you see and as you read wisdoms, or Solomon's wisdom, just the sort of things that he says. That first verse even um, is an interesting one. Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. Solomon just... He's a man who has so much. Um, he's a man of, of great wealth. He's got a, an impressive palace, which is built following the, after the temple is built. Um, he has so many wives, slaves, servants, so much gold. Um, he's got all these different people coming to visit him. And, and he knows that he is blessed by God. Uh, he asked for wisdom. God gave him wisdom, but then God also gave him wealth and long life. Um, but he realises that true understanding or understanding what life is all about is the most important thing. And with that, he gives us different bits and pieces to that first verse. You know, better a dry crust eaten in peace. Better that you don't have all that much food or you don't have glorious food. You only have basic food. But do you, do you have peace in your house? Rather than have a house full of food, a house overflowing 
and be constantly at one another, constantly be in, as he puts it, conflict or fighting. Think about the life of Christ. Think about, did he ever fight with anybody? Or whenever people were giving off at him, what did he do? He didn't. He wanted that peace um, amongst his disciples. He wanted that peace in the house of the Lord. Uh, the one time he got really cross in the temple was whenever all the money changers were there. He threw them out. You know, even Jesus had that peace. And God wants us to have peace within ourselves and within our households. Um, that peace that comes from having him as head of our house, as we would say. Or, or having God central to our lives. Now, it doesn't mean to say everything runs smoothly. It doesn't. You still have ups and downs. But again, it, it's having a, a type of peace, which Jesus talked about in John 14. Um, having a peace, a reassurance, just knowing that God is with us. So if you pick nothing else out from that chapter, and that do please go back and read over the chapters that we've read this week. Um, we're not doing this again tomorrow morning. But it's um, Sunday morning. It's, it'll be church at such at 11 o'clock. We're back to reading Proverbs again on Monday. So maybe over the weekend, if, if you've got a bit of time in your hands, you, you can you can read back on the chapters that we've done this week and just look at the, the wisdom that Solomon was trying to give about peace and about wisdom which is the knowledge of God and about how that wisdom um, can bring peace to our lives, even in the midst of everything that's going on. Nothing is so appropriate for this time. So let's pray this morning. Let's pray for um, the weekend and let's pray for uh, the churches as we gather remotely um, over the weekend. Let's, let's pray for God's peace. Father, thank you again for um, today. Thank you for the, the sunshine which we see outside, for the crisp day that you have given to us. Lord, we know that we are blessed by you and we are so thankful. Uh, Lord, even in, in the midst of this lockdown and now that it's been extended uh, and, and how it makes us all feel, we are so thankful that you are with us. Lord, we are so thankful for um, how we can continue to, to do the like of this to meet over um, the internet, to be able to read your word together and to be able to share together. Lord, we are we are truly blessed by you. As we head into the weekend, Father, we pray that um, for peace and rest for everyone, that everyone uh, who's been working would get a chance to relax and unwind. For those who can't do that over the weekend, Father, because they continue to work, we pray that they would get a break at some stage to be able to unwind. And then as we meet together on Sunday morning, Lord, of all your different churches around the world, as we, as we meet over the internet, uh, Lord, just that we pray that the technology keeps on working. Uh, but we pray that even in the midst of all of that, that we still have that sense of connection, one with each other, but more importantly, that connection with yourself. And that we feel your peace and your blessing. So Lord, thank you. And continue with us this day, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. It's been great to have you watching along. Um, I do pray that you have a, a restful weekend, if you can get a break, um, and that you do get some peace, um, and that you continue to, to look after yourselves and to stay safe. But take care. God bless. See you back here for readings again on Monday morning at half nine. Uh, and if you're not doing church elsewhere on Sunday morning, please join us at 11 o'clock or whenever you can uh, and join in with us on Sunday morning. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye.